Hello and welcome. Today we are going to fine tune the cute little browser of Llama 2, Tiny Llama. So what we are going to do in this video, figure out what is a Tiny Llama, then testing the Tiny Llama itself, why we should fine tune like a tiny model or a small model like this, then we set up the code on Google Collab, we're gonna basically fine tune the entire model just for free, we're not gonna use any tools only the open source stuff, then baking a dataset and formatting it to a dataset that will work with Tiny Llama format, tokenization and downloading the model from Hugging Face, explaining what is LoRa and configuration of LoRa and training the parameters and setting the training parameters. Then we you know, train the model, evaluation, then merge the model and test our model finally is two ways, one with hugging face pipeline and one without. And finally, an optional step that you can do or you don't in pushing the model to hugging face. Tiny Lemma is an open source language model that we trained about the trillion token for about three A box. It's built on the architecture of Lemma 2 and it's 100% open source community, which make it an excellent to be used in any project that you want. The entire code of Tiny Lama, you can find it in this GitHub repo over here. And honestly, the design of this Lama is one of the cutest Lama I ever seen. It have been trained on natural language processing, or short NLP. It have been made the last year, the 2023. And here, few info about how it has been treated. They use a the large language dataset called Slim Pijama. It's based on the Red Pijama dataset. If people are interested in kind of information, I'm going to leave the paper itself to read and know more about this awesome little model. The star code data is a dataset they also used, and the architect is similar to the model architect of Lama 2, but they fine tune a little bit, make it a little bit faster. They use positional embedding, RMS norm, and three GOL and group query attention for basically reducing the memory bandwidth make it faster in terms of usage i'm not gonna dive in details i know people get bored by beepers so i'm gonna show you the tiny llama model on a test so i'm gonna ask it i'm gonna ask it which would have a lot of protein to gain muscle and submit and uh, yeah i got an error but i also got an answer it gave me a list actually a whole greens like rye, brown rice oats high protein provided to complete source of tea nuts and seeds lean meats basically beef chicken turkey which is the most famous one eggs eggs are great source of protein and can be used in omelets scrambled eggs and all stuff so it gave me a list with an example of kind of food that i can eat this is really nice, honestly, for a tiny model. So right now we understand what is tiny lemma. We tested with just one tiny question. Why we should fine tune a tiny model? Simply put it, sometimes that the data set that you have is not that big and you don't want to waste your money or your GPU on running a large language model like Lama 2 or Mixer of Expert MC, uh, Mistral 87B. The Mistral 87B is basically 62 billion parameters, which is a large language model, honestly, if you think about it. And if your dataset is a very small dataset, like a few hundred or a few thousand of rows, you don't need to fine tune in a large language model for it. So the better solution for this is finding a tiny model on your dataset. Without further ado, let's just jump in our code. We're going to use Accelerate, Bivit, by Bits and Bytes, Transformer, and TRL. All the stuff from Hugging Face. If you already seen the large language model, fine tune model, you know this stuff already. The second step is accessing Hugging Face Hub with a notebook login. And notebook login, just bought the token over the box here and hit enter and it's done we're gonna board what we're going to need torch the data set from buffett we need the auto bfit model for casual llm the transformer auto model tokenizer pipeline bits and bytes configuration and the sttf trainer basically a supervised fine tuning training method now let's set our main thing that we're going to use the first thing the model that we are going to basically fine tune we are going to fine tune this model tiny lemma 2 1.1 billion shared version 1 this is the base model that we're going to work with as you can see it's have almost 600 000 downloading just this month so it's a very good model 
then the book model. Basically, what we're going to call the model that we have, mine, I'm going to call it Tiny Lama Code Willow, name of the channel and the name of the model. I think this is the best option to name a model and the data set. For the data set, we have to slow down a little bit because I got questions how we can create a custom data set on the last fine tuning video that I made. But honestly, I, I can't right now sit down and create a data set from the ground up. So I'm going to show you how you can take a normal data set and format it to a data set that we can use in the tiny lemma model fine tuning. I have this data set that I found in Hug and Face. It's called the awesome shed GBT prompts. Basically, you ask it something like if act like Linux terminal and it will automatically give you an a, a prompt that acting like a Linux terminal. English translation, the position of interview like web developer or mobile developer, Flutter developer, JavaScript cancel and go on and go on. So it's have a very, very, very lengthy 153 rows of prompts that we can use. So I thought, what if I took this normal data set, just a bunch of text, basically two columns, and one is named ROM, the, the other called ACT, and turn it to a data set that we can use in training. The other option that I found, but honestly I didn't like, is the BBH, which basically tell you which is true, which is false, based on that input. But I find it kind of boring, honestly. The shared GBT prompts is much, much better in terms of data set. So what we are going to do based on the tiny lemma on formation here, it's trained, as it said, it, we use the tokenization chat template formatted each message based on this links uh, here. And I went to this links and I searched for it. And as you can see, this is basically the format that we're going to stick with, turn our normal data set to a formatted data set that we want to use. The first part is the user. Basically, the first column that we have is the act, and the assistant is going to be the other column that we have, the response for the act, which is the prompt. It's just simple. How are we going to do that? Here is the format that we want, how we're going to format that data set. We're going to pass the, the act column and the prompt column to be formatted like this here and put it in one single column called text and the text will basically look like this here the user linux terminal is in the assistant i want you to act as a linux terminal blah 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 and so on until the end this is how it look after we format it we just take the data set from hugging face and we split train the data data frame and create a new column basically creating a new data set and the data set will be basically just one column and have all the data that we just formatted. With that, the data set is up and running and ready to be used, as you can see. So based on your data set, it might have multiple columns or just two columns or maybe four. You will select the questions and the answer columns. In our case, we had act and a prompt. In your case, it might be different. So with this information, leave it to you to figure out how you can take a normal data set and format it to almost any format figuring this out now that that set is done let's take a look to our tokenization and downloading the model we need to get our tokenization we use the same tokenization or uh, the same tokenization that we are using in the llama 2 bit and bytes configuration already from hugging face setting the auto model for casual large language model the model id byte bit and bytes configuration and the device is set to auto. Here, we set the model, the tokenization, get the model and tokenization from this function, and it will automatically start downloading the model for us. It's a very small model, as you can see, so it will basically cost effective for RAM and GPU. You can run it on local machine. You don't need a strong mo machine that have a, like 24 gigabyte of GPU, so you can run it. You can run almost on any GPU right now, and it will run fast. I'm going to show you results and actually a very decent result. Right now, let's talk about LoRa. What is LoRa? I already explained LoRa before, but I'm going to explain it again. The name of LoRa actually stands for Low Ranking Adaptation. Basically, this concept came back in 2021 and when Microsoft and OpenAI worked together to create a commercial 
version of GPT-3. They discover the one shot prompting alone is not, is not enough. They have fine tuned the model basically. How LoRa work? In simple way, it keep the original model unchanged and add on top of it. So this image will help you to understand. The normal way is you bought your data set, you train the model, all the weights, and it give you output. But this is the linear progression of training the model. This take a lot in terms of RAM, and it's a little bit difficult to do, it consume more time. But here, because you have to re-update, basically update every single weight inside the model itself. But Laura here come with another solution. We give it the inputs. What it do, it's freeze the current weight that we have in the original model and just add on top of it. Like it doesn't change anything. You just add a new information to original model that we have and combine the new information to the old information inside the model and give you the output. This is a simple way how I can explain LoRa without going to a details explanation of it. I explained it before, but I hope that I hope that you understand it right now. Let's go back to our coding. We have the training arguments. The training argument is very important and please focus with me because something might change based on your RAM or GPU. Here the output model, that's basically the pass to our model. The training batch size. This one you can go up as much as you want, but the GPU that I'm using right now is for free. It's a T4 from Google. I bought it to four. The batch size simply say how much data the model will see at once. Okay. I, I bought it at first at 12, but I got an error. The code are running out of memory. So be careful. If you got the code error, go down with the batch size. Then we have the steps, the optimizer. You can play with the learning rate a little bit, but don't change the schedule and the save strategy. The login steps basically show me every 10 steps what's happening. And the max steps that we have is 2050. And push to hug and face is set, committed the push to hub to true because I want to show you how we can push it in the end. Right now we can set the parameter for supervised training. We give it the model that we have that we want to use the data, the configuration of the BF, the data set text field, basically the data set that we will look at, the column that we have is called text, the arguments of training parameters, basically the, the one that we just set, and tokenizer, and set the backing false, and max SQL length is 1024. Clean a little bit of the cache of Coda, because I was running out of memory, but I don't think that you need that if you have a small patch, then I hit train and it took it about seven minutes to be done. That is not like a 100% epoch, but as you can see, the loss is going down, 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 and started to go up and down again. And you can see this in a graph using the tensor board. Uh, if you wrote this comment, I can comment it or uncomment it. I had multiple runs as you can see, but this four was giving me error because the batch size was too much. So the last one is did work. As you can see, the loss is going down, down. And as you can see, the learning rate also is going down. We came to the most important stop combining the model, the model that we created and the model that we trained, the base model that we trained on. Using, of course, again, phase transformers from the very trained function, the model ID that we used, the tiny chat model basically the basic configuration and give it the best wherever the checkpoint that you want you can basically change the checkpoint that you want i'm using the last checkpoint because it gives me the best results you can know that from here as you can see the loss number it's a very low number i think this the this one is even slower lower i think this number is even lower and this one but i chose this one anyway right now we have a model that we can merge and unload. If you write model, you can see here the inside of the model itself, the parameter and all the stuff. But right now come to the most important thing, testing the model itself. This is the first way, it's a little bit 
verbose your root out of code, generate a response, you get the user input, the user input will be formatted. And this is the format we are using here, right? And the tokenizer, we already need tokenizer for this model, generate configuration from transformer. I prefer using the, the pipeline method. You can put the temperature, max token, go low or high. Then start counter for seeing how fast the inference of the model is working will be showing up in the print. Let's give it a simple question like generate user response, which is the function that we get over here. And the user input will be a Linux terminal. I got this from the data set itself. As you can see here, the first one is they're reading the model, how you create the Linux terminal or the prompt of the Linux terminal. If I go back, as you can see here, I want you to act as a Linux terminal, which is the assistant response. Until you can, uh, want to act like Linux, Linux terminal, you will type commands, interpret their outputs and provide the relevant information. So it gives us the prompt that we want for the, the data set that we have. Let's choose a second option, which basically the favorite one, honestly, and the shorter one. We have here, I tell it the JavaScript console. Is also one of the option the prompt that we have. You can create as many prompt you right now. You can go on open Excel file, both or your data set that you want, or this from work. I don't know. You might have your own company that have an Excel sheets that you want to train your model on. This is how you can do it. We bought this prompt and the pipeline method is simple. We give it a task and the model that we were using and tokenizing and the max links. Honestly, the max length is a bit here uh, small, but I can increase it, it's not important. Then pipeline will handle the rest for us. We give it the prompt and it will give us the format. And as you can see, give me JavaScript console. Certainly here an example of using the console.log function in the JavaScript console, JavaScript. And finally, I didn't do that step because honestly, I don't need it. This data is dummy data. I don't need to work with it. You can push it using this code to a hug and freeze so you can keep it. It will push the entire folder that it have. Basically, the folder that have the name of the output that we created over here, the tiny lemma code will look. This will be pushed, entire, the entire folder will be pushed to hug and freeze. So be careful of what you are pushing. That's it for this video. I hope that you learned and enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. I hope that you subscribe and hit the like and notification button. I gonna make also more fine tune models, but honestly, it's a little bit harder than the large, than the normal videos that I make about AI, ABIs, and how you're creating links in videos. I was going to honestly to create a video about how you can fine tune Mistral, Mistral 87B. But I found it very difficult because the model is too large and the GPU is not enough. So I'm going to scale it down to a much smaller model. That's it. Thank you for watching once more. Hope you subscribe and like and hit the like and notification button. My name is Hussami Dean. Hussami can call me Sam. And see you in the next one.